And once I get to about right there, I'll go ahead and trim some of this off. Welcome back to hunting.us everybody. We got a good looking otter here as you can see that we're gonna skin out for today. Uh, this is probably gonna be a little bit longer video. We're gonna show you everything uh, from skinning to fleshing to boarding this otter here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, make sure that uh, if you hadn't liked and subscribed to the channel so far, uh, that you do that and also share it with your friends and family, any outdoor enthusiasts. Uh, we're pretty much ra wrapping up uh, trapping season now. Uh, this is just a layover from uh, uh, the end of season. And so we're working on getting everything uh, put up on the board now. And uh, then here probably next week sometime, uh, once everything dries out, we're going to be soft tanning it. So you guys make sure and stick around for that. Start out with, with the otter. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of the front legs here. With switch knobs here. There we go. An otter is a really good pelt, so you want to make sure and do it justice. And actually, uh, this was the first and only otter for us this season. And we're going to go just right here behind the pad because uh, they don't have very very long legs anyways. We'll spin it around here and I'm gonna hang it up here in just a second. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut around uh, both of the hind feet and then we're gonna cut down this seam here uh, just behind the vent and then over to the other heel. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Make sure you guys can see. All right, so you can see right there, we got it on that side. So I'm just gonna turn over this way and do the same thing. All right, so we got it opened up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the tail, I'm gonna come down probably, I don't know, two thirds of the way. I'm gonna try and keep it in the center line here and go straight up the tail. Oops. 
just like that. And while I'm right here at the tail, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some of this all from around it. I'm to shed these, at least one glove there. Now I'm just gonna work around this tail and get some of this off. And then I'll use a tail stripper to get the rest of it. Almost in behind it there. I done lost my tail stripper again. I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, that's all right. I'll just go ahead and do the rest of this with a knife. So I'm just going to insert the knife down the center of the tail. Just a little at a time, making sure to keep it straight. and then just kind of pry up. Then we'll go ahead and skin down around it like we'd been doing. Then we'll put this under and just kind of use it to cut up and under the tail, almost like you're filleting a fish. Well, I tell you what, that tail stripper would be nice to have right now. Let's see if I just can't find it real quick. Bingo. All right, so then just take it. Like we have all the other ones, strip the tail, and then we're gonna finish splitting it so it can get scraped and salted. Just all, go all the way down and run your knife up and voila, there you are. All right, now we're gonna hang this guy up real quick. And so we'll get that done. We'll be right back with you. All right, we got him hung up now. That's quite an ideal. I still hadn't got my gambrel fully set up yet. Uh, so it's just the height of the ceiling here um, of the carport. So uh, hopefully before next year, though, this off season, I'm going to be able to get a legit gambrel and a skinning machine uh, set up. That way uh, we can produce a little better quality videos for you guys. 
But essentially, uh, I'm gonna start right here at the tail and I'm just gonna take my knife and pull tension on the tail and cut. And when I'm cutting, I'm gonna be cutting in towards the body and the meat and not down towards the fur because you don't wanna gap it. So I'm just gonna be working my way all the way around being careful not to hurt my fur. And if you do make a mistake, you know, it ain't no big deal. Of course, you know, it may hurt you a little bit if you're selling fur, but we don't sell it. We just keep it for ourselves and tan it, make stuff out of it, do projects, uh, display. Uh, we may sell one of these days, but probably not. Who knows? I guess never say never. But point being is there's a learning curve with everything you do. And, uh, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. Uh, you know, a lot of times people won't do something because they've never done or are not comfortable doing it. And, uh, you know, it's partly why we're doing these videos is we want to give you guys a good idea of how to do something so you can go and do it. And as you can see from our videos that we've already posted this year, um, you know, I, I've been hunting, fishing, trapping since, you know, well, trapping since I was 15 and hunting and fishing, before, you know, before even that. Uh, and I still make mistakes all the time. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, just the name of the game a lot of times. Uh, you know, and sometimes I cause my own mistakes because I get in a hurry or get flustered or something like that. And that's just part of it too. But you shouldn't let the fear of making mistakes or messing something up stop you from getting out and taking part in conservation and doing what you love. If we had to be perfect to do everything, we'd never get nothing done in life. Because I tell you what, I'm the farthest thing from perfect, and I can assure you that. We'll start pulling here, get around this foot, and we may be able to put the knife up for a little bit and do some pull work. Kind of hard to see up here high where it's above my head to get this look like it needs to be. I may have to stand in the old chair for just a second to be able to get through this. I tell you what, this chair probably isn't ready for my big old behind either. So if I fall, you guys make sure and get a good laugh about it. Stick out right there. Go ahead and get this other foot hung up in the gambrel. Goes my knife. Oh, hopefully we can still make do with it. 
All right, and from here, we're gonna put the knife up for just a second and start pulling. Right here, we're gonna have to cut around the genitalia there. Get it going. Then kind of like any of the other animals that we, we case, we're just gonna pull down. And this was a male here, so we're gonna have to cut around the scrotum here. I'm just going to keep pulling tension, keep coming down. You can see right here on the, the sides of there's some, some flesh right there that kind of wants to come with it just Take your time and cut in around that. And we'll just alternate between the knife and pulling till we get it going here. Tell you what, uh, been skinning some of me uh, critters here the last couple of days. I've been getting hand cramps uh, pulling down on the fur. I guess that's a good problem to have, though. We've had a pretty all right season. Didn't get started too late. Could have been a lot better, but uh, for no no sooner than we got started, I don't guess we can complain too much at all, to be honest with you. An otter it and too bad to skin. It goes a little bit slow, uh, but it's probably pretty similar to a beaver as far as fleshing. It's got that layer of fat on it, uh, and you got to use the sharp side to get it going. You don't want to press down too much with if you're using a dull side of the knife because a lot of times you'll singe the hairs, and when you tan them. Uh, or stretch them, board them, it, it's going to start slipping and the fur come out anyways. So you want to make sure and be cognitive of that. You can see what I do when I stick my hand in here is I pull up and then roll my wrist back down and it pulls that real good tension on it. That way it gets some of that separation. And a lot of times, like, see, you can probably just pull it down and just take the knife and nick. You pretty much just keep doing this all the way around. And man, otters, you can see these suckers, I mean, they're just, they're solid, man. They, they got all kinds of muscle on them. They're 
probably pound for pound, maybe one of the strongest critters and fur bears uh, that there is, to be honest with you. And they do make a nice hide too. They're pretty, pretty sought after and coveted. I know even in the fur market, when uh, when fur prices are are not that good, you can still get pretty decent for an otter. But like I said, we we don't ever sell them, but uh, we like uh, we like trapping them. We don't run into them that often, uh, but when we do, we do take advantage of it. We probably do more beaver than anything, to be honest with you, even over coyote. Especially this year, we, I mean, we fly, to, especially to get started so late, I mean, we'll fly out smack the beaver this year, uh, which is good. We had several landowners that we were able to help, and uh, one of the spots uh, that we tracked a bunch of the beavers were, was uh, is wild deer and turkey hunt. And uh, the landowner was mighty pleased that we got them beavers out of there here first to them as terrorists and I don't know that I would go that far but they can definitely cause a bunch of damage uh, but they serve an important purpose in the ecosystem too but like anything else they require intensive management and that's what we're all about you know that's that was really why we decided to start this channel is to promote conservation and share our uh, lives with people and then not only that, you know, we wanted to uh, to make sure that people that, you know, wasn't as fortunate as us uh, growing up to be exposed to the outdoors and have somebody to teach us. You know, we want to serve as a resource for those people, uh, you know, to give them an idea. And, you know, we're always here to answer any questions uh, that you guys might have. You know, we pretty much devoted our lives to conservation and, you know, we want to see it continue even after, you know, we're long gone and going to be with Jesus. And so right here, we're getting to the front legs. And so I'm just kind of being careful and going uh, a little bit diagonal on the backside and uh, in here too to get that rolling, but paying attention to where I'm at. That way I'm not gapping anything. And I'm using light pressure, little strokes. That way if I'm still in the fur, you know, I'm not nicking it. I can pull up here and feel right there is the fur so I know that I need to be cutting down in here. And a lot of times the otter's legs are so short that you don't have too much trouble with them. They usually just come on out. And you can see here's the shoulder getting down to the elbow here and right there is the end of it so we're we're about there go ahead and do a little work over on this one Pull down a little. Come over here to the back. Get some of this going. And you can see the seam line right here where the fur is. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we'll try to get you to see it. Uh.
and you can see like up in here where it goes back to the chest just make sure you follow that same line up in there and then see how it kind of goes up and you'll start to see come out there and you can go on and we're about to be through this one There you can see it's starting to come through. And we'll just hang on to this and keep going with it. Whenever I'm going to be cutting on the inside of the leg here or that outside, I do like to uh, put my hand up in the fur just to guide it. That way I know where I'm cutting and don't make a mistake because it's easy to do. And believe me, I've done it more times than I care to admit. There that one is out now, so we're going to pull down. You can see here I nicked one of them veins. Uh, you can see especially like up here in the shoulder and here under it and the neck you know those veins kind of get superficial and so i try to be cognitive of it and not try not to hit them if i can help him because it does make a little messier for the flesh and job and fur clean up if you get it soaked in blood but sometimes they're so superficial especially depending how you trapped them uh you know some forms of trap cause a little bit more stress before death and others uh and you know once they get stressed out and see i just nicked that that one there but here's that uh external uh juggler there that you don't want to hit especially when you got gravity against you anyways because you got it hanging be no bueno Well, I'll tell you what, every once in a while it just pours out of that one up there that I nicked. Guess move it around and get the clots broken up and get it where it's flowing. We'll get a paper towel. It's See if we can get some of that it stopped. At least get it on there to absorb it that way we won't. Get it all over the fur.
Just take your time down around here. Make sure you don't make a mistake. Uh, Clint Smith's blood up over here too. It looked like you got some squirter there. And just keep working it down. Just grind it out. It gets tedious sometimes, ain't no doubt. And that's one thing about trapping, you know, it's very rewarding uh, because of the amount of work that it takes and the results that it produces, especially when you're talking about, you know, wildlife management and actively managing uh, for desired species on a particular property. If you reduce some of these predator numbers, um, you know, it, it's very, very beneficial. And, you know, not so much with otter, but if you got, you know, some sort of waterway there that you're uh, hunting on or near, and uh, or you're trying to manage for, uh, you know, fish, especially like, you know, some sort of hatchery setting or a farm pond or something like that. These otters, man, I'm telling you what, they are not lazy. They will flat clean you out in a millisecond. And uh, so it does make a big difference. And, you know, while we want to see all species uh, be around and be healthy, uh, you know, part of that is active management. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, that, that's just the way it is to manage for a certain species or a certain agenda. You have to eliminate certain species or greatly reduce them. Uh, and so it's just all part of conservation and what your management management objective objective uh, objective <laughs> daggum i can't talk what your management objective objectives objectives i don't know why i can't say that objectives are there we go and you can see right here uh the ears on an otter are kind of more on the side of the head so we'll just cut it straight down through that Getting down towards the eyes now. Means we're kind of getting close to the finish line. Cold where it's been sitting in that walk in cooler overnight. I'll tell you what, my hands have been a little tender lately. Like I was saying earlier, I don't know what the deal is. There's the gum line, so we're going to follow it down, stick our finger in there and pull down. That way, we're not messing anything up. Here's the eyeball here that we're kind of have almost already got around in this one. Do the same thing over on the other side. Let's see if we can get them turned around here for you. And just get ready for it, because especially up in the face, uh, around the forehead and the eyes and whatnot, uh, they get pretty, the veins get pretty superficial, so you're going to have some blood. So just realize that. Don't freak out. No big deal. Uh, I don't, I can't specifically speak to the fur market, because like I said, we don't engage in that. Uh, not that we're against it or anything, just, uh, we just don't do it. But uh, we soft tan most of our stuff and uh, we use a uh, cleaner and degreaser in the pickle solution to help get us to get the first clean and uh, you guys make sure and stay tuned for that because here in just probably a couple of days 
uh, as soon as some of these furs have time to dry out, we're going to be doing that. So you guys make sure and stick around for that video. We'll show you the finished product. I think we got, I think we got almost 20 beavers that we're going to be tanning. Uh, a couple of coyotes, a couple of foxes, uh, a couple of muskrats, this otter. Let's see what else we got. I think we may even be doing a couple of deer hide or two from that's been in the freezer from last season as well. Get all kinds of good stuff. Well, I want a couple of cones too. We've got a couple of cones and maybe a possum or two as well. And uh, the cones, uh, one of them we're going to tan for uh, my niece uh, from her uh, coons hunt that we did there not too long ago. But some of the other ones uh, we're going to make a coon skin cap out of. Well, let me rephrase that. We're going to attempt to make a coon skin cap out of it. So you guys be sure to hang around for that. That's going to be interesting. All righty. That's all she wrote there. So as you can see here, nice otter. We're going to get this put on the flesh and beam and uh, flesh it. Uh, so you guys stick around with us for that and we'll be back with you here in just a second. All right, guys. Uh, we're back with you now. We got this uh, set up on the fleshing beam. And uh, so we're just going to start up here at the top with our sharp side and get some of this started. Kind of go right through the ear here and get some of that cartilage out as we're going. Kind of slowly make your way down through here. No need to get in a great big hurry. And you know, I used to really, uh, really struggle with. Uh, Flesh and critters, especially with the sharp side. But you know, it's just a learning game, man. You gotta, you gotta learn how much pressure to put and what angle to use, and it's a little bit different on every knife and every critter. And you know, that's that's why y'all not be afraid to mess something up and make a mistake, because you're gonna learn from it, and eventually you're gonna get to where you don't make very many mistakes. We're just going to kind of go down here until we're comfortable. And you can see the, st the skin is starting to kind of bunch up down here a little bit. So we're not going to go very much further past that where we got a chance of cutting in to the fur. Go back and clean some of this up here.
You got some of that residual fat here. Kind of come down and get some of that. And it's like under the meat there, you got a little layer of fat. All right, so we're going to give them a turn now. Work on some of this other. make sure to go real gentle and slow this bit area up here where you put too much pressure or well, anywhere really but especially up here they nick it Probably about due to get this flesh knife a good sharpen, to be honest with you. Give it another turn. Try to get some of this up here while we're here. Ooh. 
I need to give me a better setup on this flushing beam too, having to bend over. See so what puts a little strain on the back. Turn around here and get some of this off this face real quick too. some of this out from around its nose and cheeks. Right here where its whiskers are, I like we do with the beaver, we're just going to checker it. That way we don't lose our whiskers. But some of this extra meat, though, we are going to get rid of it. The same thing over here, and just get some of this off. And this other whiskers are, we'll check it. While I'm here too, I'm gonna probably go ahead and turn these lips. That way they don't start rotting and we don't get no first slip. This sucker's got some big ones on him. Thought I had some pliers around here we can put on this. Yeah, we go. Hold them in place. And we'll just continue where we were at and keep on going with the process here. You can see, like I was telling you about, you got this thin layer, and then you got that layer of fat under there you gotta get.
I kind of getting to where it's kind of bunching up there again. Don't want to gap the fur, so we'll turn to this other side. ahead and get down to this storm pit here. Once I get to about right there, I'll go ahead and trim some of this off, and then I'll come to the front. This on before we go on to the front of that, we're just going to go ahead and clean up the back side of this real quick. Hey, why? I'll just turn that sucker around real quick. And get it like this, probably a little easier. Do the other one the same way.
Just keep working your way around. Nice and easy. To you get down to a good place and eventually we'll be able to get down hopefully where we can just scrape it with the dull side and move on. As you can see now, some of this just starts going with and You can see right here, it's a little bit green in that one spot and As I'm scraping over, I can kind of smell it too and So that's probably there uh, around the guts and getting close to the genitals and so even though that you know it was fresh kill and you know it was relatively warm when we killed it we brought it home put it in the walk-in cooler and i guess it's been there a little over 24 hours now you're going to get that sometimes if you let them go much longer than that and that goes for any animal without gutting them the bacteria is already in there and it starts breaking down uh, and they'll grain and then you'll have the first slip i remember the first coyote that was in warm weather and I didn't have a walk-in cooler at the time. This is back when I was a teenager. And uh, I had to go do something and come back to to skin it. And I skinned it, I man, I'm telling you what, the entire thing was green. And it was not a good deal. how we're doing on video and power yep. gotta make sure to keep an eye on the camera sometimes i get carried away and the battery dies or the card is full then messes the video up
we'll probably do the tail there last once we get some all this other off and see what we're doing so good This is just the skin portion of the scrotum where it was, so we're just gonna cut that off. All right, pretty much done to the tail now. So we're gonna use the sharp side. Cause some of this has got some thick fat on it. But we're gonna be real careful. Don't want any that. that. We're not cutting through it. Problem areas like this, you just come down through here and use a knife that way you're not cutting into the tail. Same thing up here. Got that off, just continue going down. Just be real, real careful. Go on these edges and scrape. And this, once it gets towards getting thin down here, we're gonna take the dull side and we'll go with the sharp side. I mean, you gotta be careful <laughs> 
then once we get through right here, we're just gonna do the rest of this with a knife. All right, now to do it for us, that's how you skin and flesh and otter. So I'm gonna salt this sucker down real quick. And with salt, I, so I'll use salt on all my furs uh, once I, uh, I flesh them. It does a couple things. Number one, I think that it helps lock in the hairs better during uh, the tanning process. Number two, if you don't, do such a great job fleshing or you make some mistakes or leave a little more than you ought to it helps with that because salt prevents bacteria from growing but then like right here on the belly around the genitals where it's a little bit green uh, it's going to prevent that bacteria from growing and spreading anymore and causing uh slippage to the fur so i see a spot here then i'm gonna go back and just clean up real quick All right, that's how you do it. We're gonna salt it down real quick and uh, board it so you guys stick around for that. Got my wooden stretcher, my bucket of salt. So I just like to throw them down in here, rub salt all over them. I'm gonna make sure and rub it in real good right here where it's green. Once you got it salted, just going to take your board, slide the otter over the stretcher, make sure you fit it in place there, snug it up. Once you got it all pressed out, no wrinkles in it, you're going to come down to the bottom there and you're going to lift out the panels and stretch it. You're going to do this both sides, and you'll feel the tension on it as you're stretching it. Help keep it good and in place. You don't want to overstretch it. You just want to make sure that uh, you get it good and tight. Lock those washers back down. Make sure that you square up the face. And then we're going to go down to the tail. And with the otter, the tail is longer than the stretcher here. And so we're just going to wrap it around and pin it to the back side of the stretcher. Just wrap around just like that. I didn't have uh, any uh, uh, pins with me, 
So I, I probably didn't get this shown on camera. But just tack it over there to keep it open. Uh, and you'll be good to go. And so it's pretty much done now. Ready to hang up. Dry out. Getting ready for the tanning process. Make sure to check out uh, the video uh, coming up here uh, next, especially if you like this type of content. We get in depth to trapping coyotes uh, and uh, how to increase your success rate. So check that video out there. Uh, link posted there. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. If you got any questions, let us know. Get out there and practice conservation. Keep them chains tight.